Hey guys, welcome back. We are now on to the last and final breakfast of our breakfast segments. Um, this one is going to be kind of whatever you have in the kitchen. You didn't expect people coming over for breakfast, so we're gonna do a frittata. Hey guys, welcome back to Jen's Lounge. I'm George. Thank you guys so much for subscribing to this channel. We really appreciate it. If you have not hit that subscribe button yet, hit it right now. Today we are in the kitchen. We're making breakfast again, and we are going to make frittatas. Now frittatas, it's pretty much a better version of an omelet in my opinion. So you can put anything you want in a frittata. This is pretty much just what we had laying around. So we got some arugula, uh, we have some red bell pepper, some tomatoes, and a little bit of white onion. And then I had a party on a couple days ago. So we have a few leftover cheeses from like a cheese and wine night. So we're going to throw that in there as well because why not? And there, the oven is preheated, which is going to be important for this. All right, guys, so what you want to do first is you want to turn on your burner. I'm using this electric burner just because it's going to be easier to show you guys. We have the gas stove behind us, but we're going to get that going, and then we're going to start cracking some eggs. So for a pan this size, you probably want mm, six to eight eggs, depending on how hungry you are and how thick you want your frittata to be. If you really want to show off to people you're cooking in front of, um, Crack an egg one-handed. To do that, pound it on the counter, give a little knock, and then throw your thumb right in the hole that it makes and push outward. So, boom. That's how you do it. Um, if you're not comfortable with that, do the two-hand method. Much easier, much less chance of getting uh, shells in your eggs. But here we go. So we're gonna do eight eggs. When you hit the egg on the table instead of on the edge of your bowl, you get a lot less chance of getting extra eggshells in your eggs. All right guys, so we got the eight eggs in the bowl. Now before we get those mixed up, I'm gonna get some arugula going in here. So let me grab some olive oil real quick. Right, so we're gonna hit the pan with a little bit of olive oil just to kind of loosen everything up. And then we're gonna throw the arugula in. Get that going. Hopefully you guys can still hear me. Basically you just want to cook all the water out of the arugula. And once that gets cooked down, you can throw the rest of your ingredients in. So we're going to go bell peppers, onions. I'm going to throw the tomatoes in last because those get a little watery sometimes. You just wanna kinda of toss that around, get that in there. Maybe add a little bit more olive oil just to kinda of soak everything up. Hit it with a little salt and a little bit of pepper. All right, that's getting going. Now what you wanna do, we don't have a whisk in the house right now, so we are using a fork to whisk the eggs. So you just wanna get a good mix in there. You know, you've made scrambled eggs before, you guys can do this. You can either add a little bit of cream or I'm going to hit it with a little bit of cheese that was left over from our wine and cheese party. So I got a little bit of Parmesan, uh, I have a little bit of goat cheese as well, and a little bit of just kind of some other cheddar-ish cheeses. But basically you want to be a little generous on this one. So, you know, shave some Parmesan in there. Or like I said, add, you know, some milk, some cream whatever you can to give it that kind of fluffy texture. And like I said, guys, it's not really an exact science, so whatever you got in the kitchen, whatever you're cooking with, is gonna be all good. So once you wanna do, you wanna whisk that cheese up in there. Now we'll throw the tomatoes in there. Let those cook down a little bit. All right, so what you wanna do is you wanna kinda of flatten everything out, get a good mix of stuff around, because this is gonna be your frittata base. So. You know, make sure you got tomatoes on every side, onions on every side, peppers on every side, and then you want to throw in your eggs. You want to kind of pour it slowly in so it covers all your veggies. So now you just want to kind of let that cook for a little bit until the sides kind of start to pull away from the pan. But I do have a little extra bacon left over from breakfast number two. So we're gonna throw a little bacon in breakfast number three because who doesn't like a little bacon? So we're gonna throw that on top. 
And now while this is happening, guys, you wanna preheat your oven to 350 because it's gonna go in the oven after it is done here. So like I said, I have a few cheeses left over from a little wine and cheese party, so I'm gonna throw a little goat cheese in there as well. Just kind of sprinkle it around. As you can see, it's looking pretty good. The sides are starting to stiffen up, which is what you want. And while you're waiting for that, you can, you know, if you have some extra cheese left over, throw it on top because why not? Alrighty, and as you see, just like the Olive Garden, you never say no to too much cheese. So, sides are pretty much set up right now, and now we're gonna throw it in the oven just to let it get its base set up. So the great thing about frittatas is you can, you can eat them cold, you can eat them warm, they don't have to be perfect. And now we're gonna throw it in the oven at 350. All right guys, so once that's in the oven for about five minutes, you can start cleaning up, you can start getting your placemats out, but basically we're done until we gotta take it out, which is gonna be the tricky part. All right guys, so you just wanna make sure that your frittata is totally set up in the oven. So you know, when you wiggle it, make sure there's no kind of moving egg on top, so you want it to be pretty solid. So we're gonna pop it out right now. Alrighty, look at that. See, when you wiggle, no movement. Now getting it out of the pan is the, probably the trickiest part of making a frittata. If you wanna be brave, flip it twice like I'm gonna try to do, but if you're not that brave, just serve it straight out of the pan and you will be probably much better off. But you wanna kinda of take it away from the sides to kinda of make sure nothing's gonna stick. So I'm going to attempt to Wiggle this out, which might need a spatula. Oh yeah, that's what you want. You want to get that little come off the bottom. See how it's just wiggling around all smooth and like that? That's what you want to do. All right, so now we're going to flip. So what you want to do, you want to kind of line this up with that like so, and then pray to Jesus or whoever you pray to, and hope that it comes out. Ooh, little stick in the middle, but that is the bottom, so we will be all right. So, slide your oven mitt off, grab your other plate, boom. Frittata. You know, if I didn't put enough cheese on it already, we're gonna put a little more cheese on it, because who doesn't like Parmesan cheese, right? So. Give it a little. Now guys, let me remind you, you don't need that much salt because if you're putting this much cheese on it, cheese is pretty salty. So you should be all right. Uh, maybe hit it with a little pepper if you like it a little spicy. But then you just wanna cut it up and serve it to your friends. It's good as leftovers. Um, it's, I like it hot, I don't really like cold food. I don't know about you guys. Give this video a thumbs up if you like hot food and not cold pizza. All right, so. That is a frittata. Thank you guys for watching. Be sure to subscribe, like us on Instagram, at Jens Lounge, hashtag your pictures, hashtag Jens Lounge. And if you haven't seen our other two breakfast videos, I will have them linked right after this video. So check those out. Cheers, guys.